I believe in UFOs? After having driven 125,000 miles across the continent, after having spent these years, after talking to all these people, do I believe in flying saucers? And the first thing I say is, again, that for me, the question of proving or disproving flying saucers was never my goal. Um, I usually leave it at the point that I believe that these people believe. And my real interest is, is in the beliefs, in the belief system, and how that is, uh, in many ways, a, a life-giving force, a, a life-giving momentum for people, and, and in some ways, perhaps, their anxieties and fears about the modern world. The folk concepts of Outer Space Project began for me in 1977, and in my travels, I come across a man in northern Alberta with a rocket in his barnyard. Uh, I found a, a large flying saucer uh, that was built down in New Brunswick, Canada. Um, I began traveling like that and just stopping, asking people in gas stations, waitresses, newspapers, uh, if they knew of anybody building rockets or flying saucers in their backyards. Many times the people who I asked about the, the backyard rockets and flying saucers uh, thought I was a little bit crazy, but every once in a while somebody would say, well sure, go down Main Street, take a, a left at the third stoplight and you'll see it sticking out above the guy's house. And I would follow their directions and find uh, a man who would build a 65-foot rocket in his backyard. Or somebody who had, as uh, I've just been through photographing uh, here in Pennsylvania, a man with a 30-foot flying saucer in his backyard. This is Doug Curran's portrait of the Lake City, Pennsylvania UFO landing port. The site was built in 1976 as the town's bicentennial project. It's hoped that the park's radio homing beacons will attract any aliens who might pass by. Doug's shot of a UFO detecting station captures the intensity possessed by those who believe. But are there really flying saucers out there to signal or detect? I was never motivated in working on the Folk Concepts project by trying to prove or disprove the existence of flying saucers. Many people initially think that I'm trying to look for or find flying saucers, and that's not the case. What I was motivated by was the kind of sincere beliefs the, uh, the saucer builders have about uh, the role of aliens, uh, what they represent in, in terms of uh, being saviors for Earth, uh, coming to Earth to help save us from nuclear war, population uh, problems, virtually any kind of contemporary problem we have on Earth. And I suppose what I learned from these people was the way in which beliefs, sincere beliefs about the nature of the world and, and mankind's place within the universe, affect how people live and, and what they do. One of the pieces of lighting gear that I've found really useful for me over the years is a, uh, a parabolic reflector. And this is a reflector that, rather than spreading the light out over a wide area, uh, throws a cone of light. Uh, if you were to look at a 35 millimeter 
uh, frame you would see when I've used this flash against, a, for instance, a, a black or dark wall, uh, just a circle of light in the center. And uh, with this, I'm able to throw a beam of light into an object without illuminating perhaps the foreground or the sides or unwanted parts. So many times I'll put the camera on a tripod and using the parabolic reflector, I'll literally paint the scene or areas of the scene with it. Of course, this only works when you have the ambient light very low, such as night or, or dusk kind of light situations. And because it takes a while to uh, figure out where you're flashing and, and painting the areas in, and it's a little bit of guess by golly. But uh, for a number of photographs in, in the book, it, it worked very effectively. I shoot with color negative film because it gives me more control in terms of the final outcome. Uh, it's not as contrasty as color slide film. I'm shooting in many situations where I can't control the light or I'm photographing under adverse conditions. And the, the wider range latitude of the color negative film I find is a great help to me, and I can also manipulate the, the tonalities of the print while I'm making the prints. One of the things I've learned over the years is that photographing is hard work. It's hard to make a living at, and it's hard to make good photographs. It's hard to make photographs that go beyond being mundane. And I don't know how you get to that point, except you have to try and be honest, honest with yourself, and satisfy yourself, not, not be too quick to take the praise that is handed out easily 